intermediate accounting 6A, zero coupon bonds, bonds exchange for other assets. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, and this was taken from the intermediate accounting text, KISO Wygant 10th edition, and it happened to be chapter 7. What I'd like to do is go on to the uh, next tab, which is where we talk about um, zero interest coupon bonds. So let's define it first. These are notes that are not issued at face value or par value. I'm going to use that term interchangeably. So if there's no interest rate on it, how do we get the present value on the note? Well, if we receive cash, the present value is the amount of the cash we receive, which I hope sounds fairly logical. And if the present value is the cash received, then we can impute or come up with, we can compute an interest rate. A uh, computer present value, excuse me. And that present value <coughs> is the cash received. The future value is that face amount that we get at maturity because at maturity, we've got a, some sort of stated rate, a par value, a face value that is going to be repaid at maturity and that's our future value. So I can take the difference between future value and present value and set another way. Whatever rate, discount rate, gets me from the future value all the way back to the dollar amount of the present value, that difference is my interest rate I use on the note and we'll see that in just a minute. So how do I treat the interest that's paid on the note? We recorded an account called discount on note, and we amortize that in interest revenue over the life of the note. So that way, we are getting an interest calculation, and if we have the note receivable, we're getting revenue from it, just like if there was a stated rate on the bond itself. I want to get rid of that. So here's my example. Levi's Jeans receives a three-year, $10,000 zero interest bearing note. Maybe they receive it from a customer who owes them money. So the present value, the cash that they get in the door is $77.21. So how do I come up with this implicit or implied interest rate? Well, I'm gonna get $10,000 at the end. I got $77.21 now. So the question is, what is, the, what is the discount rate, if I looked at a present value table, that I would use to take $10,000 and go backward three years to come up with $77.21? And it turns out that it's a 9% present value rate. What I mean by that is, if I take $10,000 and I discount it at a 9% rate, for three years, I'll end up with a present value of 77.21. So now I do a discount amortization table. This is very similar to what you will see on the video that I do for effective interest rate, which happens to be intermediate accounting 21 and 22. It's the same type of amortization schedule. So on the issue date, we have a carrying amount on the note, which is the value that would actually be in the balance sheet for that note receivable, 77.21. And if I take that carrying amount times 9%, that's the amount not only of the discount that I amortize for the year, it also is the interest revenue. They're one and the same. So if you remember with discounted bonds, when we amortize them, the carrying amount increases up to the par value at the end. So this number rounds to that $10,000 face amount. So the process is multiply the carrying value times 9%, add that discount amortization to the prior carrying value, we get a new increased carrying value, and then we do it again. We take new carrying value in blue times 9% to get it both the interest revenue and the carrying amount and the amortization, we add that amortization amount for year two, we get a new carrying value, and then one more time, we take 
New carrying value in blue times 9%. That's our interest revenue. And our discount amortization. Add that to the carrying value and we get back up to the carrying value of the note. If you look at it in terms of T accounts, we paid out cash to the borrower. We have a note receivable. We debit, I'm sorry, we credit that interest on note receivable at the very beginning when we issue the bond. And each year we debit that account and we credit interest revenue. So at the end, with rounding, we have a zero balance in the discount on note receivable account. And the entire amount of the discount, 2278, has moved into revenue. If you want to look at the T accounts below, here are the T accounts. The journal entries, excuse me. Here's the journal entries. Note receivable at the beginning, it's an asset. There's the discount. The difference between the note receivable and the discount is the amount of cash we receive. The 7721 is the carrying amount that goes on the balance sheet. We have discount each year. We have interest revenue each year. And when I say uh, what goes on the balance sheet, the note receivable less the discount will be shown together on the balance sheet. And this is the net figure. That's the carrying amount that's going to go on the balance sheet on the date that we issue the bond. That's the end of Intermediate Accounting 6A. We're going to do bond exchange on the next video. Not on the web. Our additional videos and spreadsheets, not on YouTube, where we repackage, format, and add data and put our uh, content information into groups that you can easily watch as part of a course review. YouTube channels, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You can email me for a complete list of our videos on YouTube. The live tutoring and Chat sessions, stltest.net is the website. Here's our email and telephone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.